So we're talking about Real Housewives of New York. I don't know what episode this is. We come back from Leah. I'm a, I gotta go to the post office, so. We gotta come back from Leah and her mom is mad at her, right? And she's still not speaking to her. Sonia had her fashion show. That's the episode that I didn't review. She had her fashion show and that's where Ramo, uh, she tried to give her a sweatsuit and a foot and some kind of hat i was like what kind of outfit is that that sonia was trying to give to leah to wear i guess she thinks leah is this like i don't know urban type of girl because she gave her I, I, and, and these glasses that were just didn't look right it was a mess so jock and um luann they meet up they haven't seen each other jock is engaged when um <laughs> when Luann was with Jacques they they were actually really good together to be honest um but she's explaining to him how she's on pro off of probation and how she really wants to drink but she kind of made a promise to herself and he told her you know I support you but you could you could just have one you know one one glass of wine a day and that's it and she's like no but what if I want another one he was like no just one once a day just once a day and she was like, okay. So she was like, have you heard my new song? And he was like, what is it? And so she plays um, Phil and Giovanni for him. And the song is stupid. It doesn't even make sense. I don't even know why she made the song. It's so dumb. It's so silly. I guess she tried to, you know, kind of take that, what Dorinda was yelling in the audience that time. Giovanni! Giovanni! Because Dorinda got this designer to give or to design dresses or make dresses for Luann for her cabaret show and she didn't really she wasn't really thankful to Dorinda for the connection right and so she didn't even say thank you to my friend Dorinda who you know got me in contact with this wonderful designer who Giovanni who made these beautiful dresses she didn't do that and Dorinda wanted that from her so when during during um, Luann's performance, Dorinda was yelling from the audience, Giovanni! <laughs> Giovanni! Like, girl, are you gonna say thank you? Like, what? They were like, girl, Dorinda, relax. You know, Dorinda was drunk. But that's a little background on uh, uh, feeling Giovanni. And even um, Jacques was like, who the heck is Giovanni? Um, so they were talking about um, Luann's show. She's gonna have a, no a new show, kind of like a little, little, a little bit. Um, another cabaret show, show called Mary F. Kill and um, so she's going to be practicing for that and everybody's talking about how so they're being supportive Dorinda goes and buys she goes to see the townhouse that her and Richard shared and then she goes to this restaurant called Nello's that her and her ex-husband who is deceased um, who you know they used to go there every Wednesday I think she said and so they're sitting there and Ramona's Ramona shows up Sonia shows up and the other girl I think her name is um, Amelia or something like that I can't remember her name but I guess they're trying to push this girl in because she was doing she's doing interviews so she's a friend of the housewife I guess I'll show up and they're talking of she Ramona mentions that Dorinda must be going through a lot because she's talking about Richard a lot Dorinda finds comfort in Richard you know that's her ex-husband she had a great life with him he died her life changed and it hasn't been the same since she was carefree you know didn't have worries in the world and now she's with this man where she has to take care of things and she's she when I guess when Dorinda needs to feel comforted she talks about her ex-husband because he was a comfort for her you know she had a different life and I understand that and she does talk about Richard a lot but you can't tell somebody you know when to get over a, a person who died that was a, a major part of their life you know who changed their life you know what I'm saying so I don't know um so Sonia says she's on a fast she's basically starving herself um, because she has gained what she say five to seven pounds and her clothes are fitting funny That's a nice truck. Her clothes are fitting funny So she's basically starving herself and they're talking about Leah saying how Leah is so interesting You know she Leah's the youngest her and Tinsley are the youngest uh, two on the show and 
she they start talking about Dorinda's issues with Tinsley and how maybe bringing Leah around will help her have this conversation with Tinsley because she opens up to Leah. So Luann is talking about how she's in a good place, she's not drinking, and how she's committing long term and how when you commit long term like that, this is what Ramona's saying and which I totally agree with. I can't believe I'm agreeing with Ramona. When you make those kind of long-term commitments to yourself for something like that, and it goes for anything, whether it's eating bad food or trying to diet or trying to eat healthy, when you make these long-term commitments and you're unable to keep those commitments to yourself, you feel bad and you feel ashamed and that will probably cause you to dive deeper into this addiction that you have to whatever it is you know what i'm saying i'm trying to go to the post office child let me see hold on i'll be right back all right so she just basically said you know when you do long-term commitments like that and you fail you just you get you tend to be harder on yourself you set yourself up for failure and i agree with that but Ramona is supportive of Luann and so is everybody supportive and I like the way that they are being supportive to her like girl we know that we drink we know that we drink we know you're not no alcoholic we know that Richard was that his name no not Richard what was that guy's name that gigolo he wasn't a gigolo Tom we know that Tom drove your ass to drink you know what i'm saying and so girl we know that after all of that that's the reason why you were drinking so if you want to have a drink we're not going to beat you over the head we're not going to shame you we're not going to do any of that but so even sonia sonia said she i mean not sonia dorinda said she was a full figure at size six girl what <laughs> girl what <laughs> anyway so tansley and her overbearing mother they are sitting down having uh, dinner and she says that the relationship with Bruce is over and she realizes that she just really wanted to have another guy in Chicago so maybe she thought maybe she would just bump in to Scott and Tinsley's mom says Scott don't want to be bothered with you you 44 years old you don't have no kids no responsibilities no nothing he don't want to be no bruce don't want to be bruce not scott bruce don't want to be bothered with you you don't have your stuff together which is backwards to me but we know what tinsley's mother's goal is is to get their daughter married off to some wealthy man and have have babies i mean her mother really wants that for her and i don't think Tins, i think tinsley's okay with being a trust fund baby let me tell you something if i was 44 single with no dependents and could hop around all over and had a trust fund i would stay single and no dependents you would not be able to get me to do nothing i'm not doing none of that i'm not doing none of that give me my allowance my father mother whoever have set up a trust for me to get an allowance i don't want to get married i want to travel i want to drink i want to be a socialite i'm not doing none of that and i don't blame tinsley and tinsley is too chicken shit to tell her mom i don't want to be married i want to have a boyfriend yes but i don't want to be married and i damn sure don't want no baby they're trying to get tinsley to freeze her egg. i think she's half had frozen her eggs her mother says basically that Bruce didn't want some uh, some complicated woman with no kids. I was like, girl, what? <laughs> girl, so Sonia figures out that she ain't so shit. She didn't. She's experiencing losses in her company. Um, but I guess she's at um, Century Twenty One. Is that what it's called? I thought Century Twenty One was a real estate company that people that sold houses. Century 21, that must be an East Coast thing. I feel like I've heard of Century 21, but maybe I'm thinking about Forever 21 and Century 21 is the real estate place. Y'all tell me, that must be a, a East Coast thing. It must be Century 21. They're counting their losses, which is good. I'm glad she's going over to look at, come on, son. I'm glad she's um, over there, you know, trying to figure out because a lot of people, they just put their name on something and they don't know if they're making money or not. So I, kudos to Sonia for going down to New Jersey 
um, to look at her books with her business partners and stuff or whoever's keeping her books. So Leah is on the phone with her child's father, Rob, and she kind of was talking about how she has a little bit of resentment towards him because he never married her. <clears throat> but she's they're going back and forth flirting, which they have this relationship that's kind of more of like their friends who had children together. You know what I mean? And I think he's okay with that. She seems to be okay with that. I think she would like to be with him. I don't know if Leah wants to get married per se, but if she does, I think it, she wants to be with Rob. Like, is it a red light? She wants to be with Rob. You know what I mean? I think that's what it is. But I think he's just like whatever. And he's this free spirit or he just, I don't know really much, but she seems to look to him kind of like, you know, like her best friend. And I think that's cool. And I think that if you can fall in love and have children and be in a partnership with your best friend, that is the ultimate. I think that's a, the ultimate goal. Like somebody who, I don't know. I, I just, I, and I could see why Leah would be like, yeah, cause he's cool. We still cool. He's not, he's, we have this great relationship we do well as co-parents together and a lot of the times when women see that a man is a good father they mistakenly th believe that he will make a great partner and that is not always the case just like some women are good mothers they're just not good partners the same exact thing those are two different roles that I think women get messed up I knew a dude he was taking care of his sister's children and women used to be like wanting to like get with him i don't know if the damn the eggs were releasing but we get this idea like oh my god he's a good father he's a provider he can take care of and so our instincts are to be like okay this person can take care of but he could he's a good dad he's not a good partner and you know that's probably who what rob is right that's how i feel she said that her mom has stopped talking to her um, she said something about church. She stopped going to church when a preacher hit on her and asked her how many sexual partners that she had, which is very inappropriate. But, you know, a lot of things in the church, they, when it comes to sex and they really shame people in regards to sex, but at the end of the day, they usually be really real, a lot of deviant sexual deviant behavior goes on in the church and amongst its um leaders and the ones that shame you for you know being a human <clears throat> luann is having a fundraiser where they are doing like um what are they doing telling jokes but i thought it was stupid to have a anti-bullying fundraiser and then for the show to be comedians and people telling jokes, bullying and joke telling, that don't go at all. I was like, who who, who planned this? Because this was dumb. This was dumb. The jokes weren't flying. It was just, it was just very awkward. The whole thing was really strange. Ramona and Leah, they're going to Luann's party. Um, on the way there, Ramona is telling Leah, you know, did you talk to your mom? And she was like, yeah, she texted her. She was like, you cannot text her. That's not something that you can do. That's not a conversation. Your mom is upset. Ramona was being very motherly to Leah. You know, I wonder how Ramona is as a mother because we didn't really see a lot of Ramona as a mother. You know what I mean? Because her daughter was like already preteen when they first came on right 12 13 so she was already like d coming into her own type of independence so we didn't really see much of Ramona I remember when the girl went off to school or am I mixing that up with Sonia anyway he says she really um, she really looks at her her mom really is um, I guess hypercritical of her um, she's her judge. You know, we all have one in our lives. Somebody who's just that, 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 that judge, judge, judge. If you had any sense, you'd remove them out of your life. Because if they may, if they're making you feel, if they're making you feel, you know, like a failure just by doing something 
by you know having a drink again that's some there's those conditions on the relationship and that doesn't make a good relationship Ramona tells her to bring her mother's favorite flowers at Luann's event Tinsley Dorenza Dorinda Leah Ramona they're all they're all at Luann's event and then Dorinda says I think that you and I and Leah should have lunch Tinsley Leah and Dorinda have lunch and Tinsley was like what does Leah need to come for basically and she was like no you just you know you could just you could just come I think I think you're you're more open when Leah's around oh I'm a, like I'm a big girl like this mothering thing I think as much as Tinsley loves her mother I think she rejects being mothered because her mother is overbearing so when these older women start acting motherly to her I think she rejects that like I don't you don't have to treat me like a child you know what I mean but you living on an allowance girl you gonna have to expect some kind of treatment you know what I mean I know I don't know anyways they asked Dorinda and um, Ramona did they bully baby they they rolled the footage the footage is they rolled them and they showed Dorinda telling uh, Sonia that her vagina was the Holland tun Tunnel and that, that she needed an easy pass on her vagina. <laughs> Girl. So Luann says she hasn't had a drink since probation. I believe that Luann knew that there was vodka in that drink. I believe that she did. She thought, she said she thought it was water. I don't believe that at all. I believe Luann has been wanting to drink and she's just trying to figure out like last season I thought she was really trying to figure out a way to stress herself out because she was creating was well, it not last year I think a year before last where she was creating conflict with people and then saying like oh my god I just feel like drinking I'm like girl just have a drink but she was on probation so that's probably what part, part of the temptation was to do something that you know you're not supposed to be doing but she was like you're not in AA you're not on probation if you want to have a drink it's okay it's not a big deal and Luann, Luann was like oh my god that was so good whatever it was I don't know it was pretty much it I don't know about the, much about the episode child I don't know let me turn around here I need to turn around anyways that was pretty much it of the episode I don't know I'm just not into it I mean I am into I am into New York Housewives but I guess I don't know if I'm really into it or not I don't think I am maybe it's just the day and it's just so far off you know what I'm saying like I've I waited like it's only been a week though I'm really putting up doing the most it's only been a week I need to turn around before I go back Elise that's her name Countess Luann de la Sebs Jacques gets up there. His jokes were tired and through. Oh, and then she asked Tinsley, was she intimidated? She, um, what's the girl's name? What's the girl's name? Leah says that Dorinda's be attitude or personality is intimidating. And Dorinda immediately turns around to Tinsley and was like, you find me intimidating? She was like, girl, that's not what I said. She did not say that. But you took it as that because you want a problem with Tinsley. Tinsley. And, and somebody in the comments said, and I kind of agree, I think that Dorinda, Dorinda's my girl, but I think Dorinda wants to have that carefree life that Tinsley has and not to have a care in the world. And for the most, you know, you know, when, you know, the, the problems that Tinsley talks about that she has are so like trivial. And I think Dorinda kind of misses that. I don't know if she's jealous per se of Tinsley more so that she wants that life that she used to have and Tinsley embodies that life. That's what I kind of think. So Dorinda says, I got to go. Like Dorinda had been drinking. So she was like, girl, Tinsley's talking mess. I don't know what she's talking about. I'm cool. I got to go. I, and you know how I get when I drink. So it's time for me to exit stage left. You ain't never worked for me, bitch. When I tell you that Selena Johnson read the dog shit out of Nikki Gilbert with your black gums and all, honey, it's a special place in hell for a bitch like you that caused caused division amongst women. <laughs> Are you worth? I ain't never worked for you, bitch. I ain't never worked for you. Anyways, I'm out of here. Take care of each other, peace. I gotta go. Bye.